Hi, my name is Ella Tier. I'm a writer-director and I welcome you to my 10-minute crash course on screenplay format. There are five elements in a script page. The slug line, also called scene heading, the actions, also called descriptions, the character's name, the dialogue block, and parentheticals. Let's talk briefly about each of these elements. The slug line, or scene heading, is a tool intended for breaking down a script for production so that we have the information we need when we budget and schedule a shoot. Think of your slug lines as a list that will easily turn into a spreadsheet. Don't get creative with them and stay super consistent, otherwise your script will come across as unprofessional. So here goes, all caps, INT or EXT to indicate interior or exterior, followed by a period and one single space. Follow that with the location. Remember it's a spreadsheet, so don't get flowery and descriptive. Avoid interior Melissa's large, beautiful apartment with 1920s decor. Now, just interior Melissa's apartment. You'll tell us about it in the descriptions below and only once. Follow the location with a single dash that has just one space on both sides of it. And tell us if it's day or night. This is a lighting instruction intended to create a shooting schedule. I advise against getting fancy about it being early morning or late afternoon, etc. Just let us know if the sun is out or if it's nighttime. The director and DP will sort out the specifics of the lighting. If it's sunrise or sunset, that's a very specific look, so you could indicate that. But remember when you write a two-page scene that takes place during a sunset that you have about 10 minutes of sunset to shoot that scene and two pages can take half a day to shoot. So consider keeping magic hour to a minimum. You could, instead of day or night, let us know that the scene is continuous in time from the previous scene. For example, interior Melissa's apartment day. Melissa grabs her keys and runs out the door. Interior stairwell continuous. She locks her door, darts down the stairs, and exits the musty lobby. Exterior Melissa's apartment building continuous. Melissa rushes out of the building. If the following scene takes place a few moments later rather than continuously, write moments later. For example, interior Melissa's apartment day. Melissa grabs her keys and runs out. Exterior Melissa's apartment building. Moments later, Melissa rushes out the building. So we skipped her being in the stairwell. If a scene takes place in the same location but we cut forward in time, later or moments later are legitimate slug lines. Interior Melissa's apartment day. Melissa frantically searches through her purse and coat pockets. Moments later, Melissa paces while yelling into the phone, I can't find my keys. You can use the forward slash in slug lines to specify an area within a given location. For example, interior Melissa's apartment forward slash bathroom day. Melissa applies eyeliner in a hurry. Interior Melissa's apartment kitchen. Melissa has a coffee spill. Interior Melissa's apartment living room. Melissa searches frantically until she spots her keys. I didn't write day or night because it's clear that these are more or less continuous. In fact, I could formally write it as a montage scene. These one word slug lines are legitimate because we know exactly where we are and whether it's day or night. Be sure, however, when listing shots in a montage that you give us the slug line we need to break down the script for production. If the montage was all over the place, at home, her car, her office, each of these locations would receive a full slug line for the purpose of scheduling the shoot. You may find variations on all this. Dashes used instead of forward slashes or different methods to indicate a montage scene. That's fine, but whatever style you use, keep it consistent throughout your script and easy for readability and for breaking down the script for production. Most of your slug lines will look just like this without the bells and whistles. Actions, also called descriptions, go all the way across the page. After every slug line, there will always be some bit of action before any dialogue can begin. This orients us as to who's in the room and what we're looking at. If you write, interior Melissa's apartment day, Melissa, how are you today, Mr. Wesley? I don't know who she's talking to, where she is in the room, or what she's doing. But if you write, interior Melissa's apartment day, Melissa lounges on her couch, looking lonely as she pets her cat. How are you today, Mr. Wesley? Now we know that she's talking to her cat. So always set up the scene right after a slug line with even a brief action so we can orient ourselves and know what's going on. Actions are always written in the present tense to let us know what we're seeing or hearing. If you write, Melissa has been lounging around on her couch, I don't know what I'm filming or what the audience is looking at. In a script, you would write instead, Melissa lounges on the couch. 
Actions in a script let us know what image and sounds we're recording. If you write, Melissa used to sit by that window and dream big dreams, despite the moldy smell surrounding her. I don't know what to film or what to record. I also don't know what the audience is looking at because one, this tells us what she used to do, so we don't know what we're looking at right now. Two, it's telling us what she's thought about, her big dreams, but we can't film her thoughts. And three, we can't film the smell of mildew. If, however, you write, Melissa sits by the window wearing a plastic tiara while the royal wedding airs on her TV screen, covering her nose, she takes out an air freshener and sprays around her in disgust. I know exactly what to film. I know what the audience is seeing on the screen. They're seeing Melissa sit by the window wearing a plastic tiara. They're seeing, possibly hearing, the royal wedding on the TV screen. They know it stinks because of her reactions and her spraying the room in disgust. Let's take another example only because this is such an important point. If I write, Melissa storms out, angry that he would do such a thing, and especially since he's done that before. I can't see on the screen why she's storming out or that this is something he's done before. All you can tell us is that Melissa storms out. The context of what happens before or after will have to tell us the rest. This is a really fun challenge to master when learning this medium. It's possible to tell profound and moving stories using only the present tense and relying only on two senses, sight and sound. Remember as well, the script is not a finished work in and of itself. It's a blueprint. The film will be the finished work. Lastly, break up your paragraphs to indicate the beats of the story. Paragraphs in screenplays average one to two lines in length. A three-line paragraph is considered long. So if you have several long paragraphs, your script will be mentally flagged by a reader as unprofessional. So don't be that guy. <laughs> Sentences and paragraphs in screenplays don't have to be complete. Sentence fragments are welcome. You use these types of breaks to cue the pace of the story and also to call her attention to what you want to emphasize. Melissa, frazzled, runs around the room, searching, 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 searching. She dumps the contents of her purse, another purse, and another. She turns her coat pockets out, nothing there. Next are the sofa cushions. The cat, scared, meows and runs away until finally, the keys. They're in the cat food bowl. I capitalize meows to emphasize that moment, and I capitalize keys for the same reason, but don't overuse this tool. If you make everything important, then nothing will feel important. Break your paragraphs into small beats and use them to let us know about the pacing of the actions and what we should pay attention to. The third element in the script is the character. This is centered and capitalized. When the character appears in the descriptions, they're only capitalized the first time they appear. Thereafter, write them in lowercase letters. If the character is not on the screen, for example, they're shouting from another room, add the letters OS to indicate that they're off screen. Doug off screen, not the keys again. Check the kitchen. If the character is not present in the scene but narrates, use the letters VO to indicate a voiceover narration. If we only hear someone on the phone and never film them talking, you can use the word filtered to indicate they're a phone voice only. Last little tip, avoid similar names. They'll make your reader have to work too hard. Jack, Jane, Jill, they can't occupy the same screenplay. Make names as different as possible in sounds and in length. Jack, Belinda, and Crash are happy to occupy the same screenplay. Next, we have dialogue. A dialogue block is not centered, it's left justified like any other paragraph, but it has a very wide margin. Any screenwriting software will automatically create that margin for you. Dialogue blocks average one to two lines in length. If you have people speaking to each other in monologues, this is a clear sign of a novice screenwriter. You might find that both your actions and dialogue are overwritten when you free write. Don't worry about it, just write your heart out and later go back and trim, 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 and then trim some more. If characters speak at the same time, you can use the dual dialogue feature. Use this sparingly. Good actors and directors know that people speak over each other all the time. You don't need to create that in the script unless it's particularly important to the story. If a character speaks in another language, other than the language you're writing the script in, you can use the dual dialogue feature to show the translation. 
You can also indicate that all italicized lines are spoken in said language, and then write in the language your reader will understand, signaling with italics that those lines will be in another language. If you have a text conversation, don't write it as a dialogue since it's not something we're hearing. Write it as an action since it's a visual. Texts. Melissa, where are you? Doug, at the bus station, where are you? Melissa, OMG, I said the train station. It'll be up to the director to figure out how to show this visually. Use phones and texting and scripts as little as possible it's much more dramatic and exciting to see people engage in person. Lastly, the parentheticals. Like dialogue, these are not centered. They're also left justified, but with an even wider margin than the dialogue. Again, every screenwriting software will automatically format these for you correctly. A parenthetical lets the reader know how something is said or what action the character is taking while they're saying those lines. Happily, happy birthday, Jonathan. Happily, thanks. Opening the bottle, drinks? Use parentheticals sparingly. When you polish the script, get rid of most of them. The fewer the words, the better the script. Use them to indicate tone only when it's not implied in the story and we really need that information. For example, Melissa pissed off. Happy birthday, Jonathan. Jonathan depressed. Thanks. Melissa opening the bottle, drinks? That's a very different scene. Here we need the parentheticals because they give us information we wouldn't get from reading the dialogue alone. Avoid the common beginner's mistake of embedding parentheticals inside dialogue blocks. Every parenthetical receives its own line. It makes the script much easier to read and follow. Lastly, every script is written in courier font 12 points. If you change the size or font, your script will not be taken seriously. That's it. You're ready to write screenplays that will match professional scripts in their appearance. Have fun. To learn more, please visit me at theindependentfilmschool.com where I offer many different trainings for screenwriters and filmmakers, most of which are free. Thank you.